Hey, what's up, everybody? I am here at Hewlett Studios with Josh Manuel. Yeah. Uh, it has been an absolutely awesome day. We did some covers together, played some drums, just jammed out. Uh, if you don't know Josh Manuel, which I bet a lot of you already do, he is the current drummer for Issues, um, tours with him, writes with him, uh, also does a whole bunch of session work, mm -hmm. um, goes around, plays other gigs, plays at church as well. Yep, right down the road. Um, yeah, Stone so Creek. this guy does it all, and that's why I wanted to sit down with him and chat with him a little bit about music today and just kind of ask him how he got to where he is, what it is that kind of makes him tick, how he achieved success in the music industry. And that's really what uh, this whole interview is about, is just cool. how to make you more successful and how to show you what other drummers do to be who they want to be and, and go out and do music every day. So awesome. Awesome to get to play with him today and uh, I'm super excited for this thing. So let's start it off um, right off the bat and just ask you what was it that got you started playing music? Uh, I was, okay so I was two and I grew, yeah well I grew up <laughs> okay, I grew up in church my dad is a youth pastor so I grew up literally just with like musicians always around me. Uh, dad plays guitar and sings, mom plays guitar and sings. Okay. Um, so literally I was just like born into like a musical family mm -hmm. basically. Uh, and you know, we spent a lot of time at church where there was drummers and musicians and, um, and I just like naturally gravitated towards drums, I guess. Okay. Um, and then from there, like I literally like, you know, like you said, like I still play at church. So that was my background for like forever. And mm -hmm. we're in Atlanta, of course. So there's a lot of different variety of styles, mm -hmm. even within just like, you know, worship drumming and gospel, there's gospel stuff and there's, you know, a lot of different stuff. Uh, so that's kind of, that was kind of my background at first. So do you consider yourself to be a drummer who plays a wide variety of music? I, that's my goal. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I'm there yet. There's, <laughs> there's still a lot of loopholes in my like playing, but uh, yeah, I mean that I think as far as like drumming and getting, you know, getting the gig or whatever, mm -hmm. um, that's, yeah, like I said, that's my goal. Nice. It's just to be as prepared for any situation, whether it's like in a studio or, you know, in a, in a live atmosphere, getting a different gig, playing for an artist, you know, playing in a band, you know. I guess I just tried to be as versatile as I could. Yeah, and I think the way that you said that and the way that you've approached today has really been a shining example of who you are as a musician and who you are as a person and how that has kind of helped get you to where you are. And that's just being very humble and being very personable and understanding that there's always more to learn. I mean, oh, yeah. do you feel that way? Dude, yeah. Like, uh, that's that was kind of what, whenever, like I teach lessons on the road and um, it's usually really personal and it's cool. And um, like one of my main things is like, just never assume you really have it, have it all together mm. just because you don't. And uh, exactly. uh, I mean, if we're being honest, yeah, like um, I think one of my favorite things about being able to travel is like, like this summer we did Warp Tour and uh, one is some of my best friends now, you know, we've been touring together for three or four years. So we all are on this one tour. But like this summer, I, uh, a friend of mine sold me his electronic kit and I literally would like run the extension cord from our back lounge into our trailer. And then like after everyone played their, you know, their sets every day, literally like all of us would just sit in our trailer. Oh, and like everyone hated us because literally just like these cheesy loops like and we're just shredding but uh the coolest part about that was just like all these dudes who have way different styles and literally like just trying to learn as much as possible yeah and you learn a lot from the people around you right exactly, if you soak yeah. it up yeah 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 i'm def definitely like a very visual learner mm -hmm. i've just always been like that like i don't read music to the point where i can sight read I could maybe get something, mm -hmm. you know, get get through something, but uh, yeah, for me it was very like a by ear and visual, like that was just kind of how stuff clicks for me, I guess. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, it's, it's definitely. I've I've talked to a lot of different people who really feel that like it's the people around you that can mm -hmm. that can be a big um, a factor, attribute, attributor. Yeah, yeah. Attrib what whatever. Yeah, it, yeah. Will yeah, really sure. help. Um, how to become a better player, so that's really cool. Yeah. If you could really nail you being able to do music as a living on like one thing, is there is there something that stands out to you as like, this is what really helped make me who I am today and helped me get that gig? Um, I know that's a tough question. It is. So. Uh, no, it's cool. I, I think for me, like, um, well, I, you know, we started doing like, I started doing, you know, YouTube videos like a long time ago. Um, and I still try to get as many out as I can and, you know, do that. Cause I honestly just love it. But like, um, I think 
that like gave me the opportunity to get more gigs. And once that ball started rolling, I literally just never said no to gigs. Um, obviously, like I wouldn't just go join a band, <laughs> but like you know, like weekend gigs, like a week long run or something. Like literally, I just would go, and like a lot of times. I was not ready for those gigs, uh, but you know, like the stuff you learn from just like going, because I don't think you ever feel ready. Yeah. Uh, and so for me, that's just what it was. Like I would literally just like go for it, and there was times where I just bombed, dude. Like uh, there was one, like my okay, my first. I think I told this story on like a podcast thing I just did, but the first like Nashville session, you know what I mean, like. Yeah. My first like real session was uh, with this band called After Edmund and Mitch Parks, who I, I dude I love him and he like he's like one of the dudes who like taught me how to music, mm -hmm. like you know what I mean, just like yeah. on a professional level or whatever. Uh, but I was in I was in the studio with them and I like didn't really understand exactly how things work. I was it was when I like had just got to Georgia State, so mm -hmm. I was really young. Anyway, long story short, I just bombed like the just bombed, dude. It was so bad and. Uh, they kind of like I went in there and tried to do my thing, and they're just like, "Yeah, all right, come, come, you know, come on back." Like, uh, and then like he called me two weeks later, he's like, "Yeah, man, like, you you know you bombed, right?" Like, and I was like, "Yeah," but the thing about that is like one, I you know I got a really like true experience of how studio work, like or how studios work, and like how it's just like you got to be able to think on your feet, you got to be able to just like write, you know, as it comes. Uh, Anyway, I, it was it was a like negative experience or whatever, but it taught me like so much. Like, if I hadn't have gone for that, then I never would have really gotten my feet wet with like studio stuff. Where now this is you know years later, I'm like, this feels like home to me. Yeah. So, exactly. That was a very long winded way to say just go for it. it no, I, mean, <laughs> I, I love that. I always tell people, um, until you have you don't have the time or you don't have the ability, say mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Because I mean, it doesn't like. It doesn't matter whether or not you're playing the exact genre that you believe in or the exact thing that's like, this is what I do want to do yeah. in drumming. Exactly. Every little piece will make you better. And exactly. I'm, I'm sure you've experienced that playing like issues isn't exactly where you, you know, started out, but it's no, the yeah, things yeah. that you've done to get you there. Yeah, man. I, uh, that's a funny story, too, because like it was one of my best friends, like Chris Miller, who now tours with us and travel. He's insane guitarist. But like uh I was doing studio stuff like we were talking about earlier, uh, like later on down the road and you know, the issues opportunity kind of came up and I was like, I had listened to heavy music and I loved heavy music for a long time, but like, you know, I had a double pedal and I, you know, I didn't get much farther than like a pretty generic breakdown on double bass. Mm -hmm. um, so when they were like, hey, you know, do you want to join the band? Do you want to think about doing this? I was like, you know, yeah, I'm not, I'm not your guy. Like, I just don't think like I can really hang, honestly. Yeah. Um, and in a lot of factors, that was true. Uh, like my feet for sure is the worst part of my playing, but uh, basically I just took one of my friends, Chris, being like, yeah, if you don't do this, like you're literally just scared. Yeah. And so, I mean, I went for it and like there's still parts from the early records, like I was saying earlier, there's still parts that I struggle with and that's still, th like three years later, that's mm. still stuff I work on with my feet. Yeah. Um, but and again, you know, if I didn't just go for it, I think I would have regretted it. Yeah, if you think that you know everything beforehand and that you're like perfectly ready for any situation, yeah, you're not. But yeah. being willing to take that jump and to try things and to go after something that's scary. That's, yeah. Oh, I bet it was scary. I can't but, even imagine playing for for issues. I mean, I would be in the same shoes you are, where yeah. I'm like, ah, I don't really, or yeah. you were, not are, but yeah. like, I don't know if that could really yeah, yeah, handle yeah. that to the to the extreme that you would think. You yeah. Know? So. But the best part was like. All like all the dudes in the band are very talented. They're great dudes. Like it ended up just being great for me, like as a person and as a drummer, as a musician, uh, like in all aspects. Like it just really rounded me out really well because, um, like being around, like you know, you were talking about being around people who are so talented. Like if you care even a little bit, like it's gonna rub off on you. So if you really dive in head first, which I tried to do the best, uh, you know, I still try. Like just always trying to improve, looking to get better at everything. Like you know, you have that opportunity to really better yourself. Um, and I, I, yeah, I feel like I'm lucky for that, honestly. Comes right back around to that attitude. And I mean, you know, those guys wouldn't have been so excited if you came in thinking like, oh, you know, I've got everything. And then if you're not, if you don't have the ability to understand that there's stuff to learn and there's stuff to be better, I, I don't yeah, think yeah. it would, it would be so, so easy for you to mesh with people. So, well, thanks. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool, man. So, um, 
We did some videos today. Yeah. And, uh, we did, what, what were the songs? Inside Out by the Chainsmokers Chain and then Ride by 21 Pilots. Yeah. So we're, we're cool. super pumped about those. Um, actually, um, let's see, some sponsors over here. You, oh, yeah. You are SJC for I drums, am. correct? You got that crazy Pokemon drum set. I do. You we're working on. That. We're working on a new one that's based off of like our new album artwork, which is okay. Cool. Uh, some stuff. But yeah, they they literally made me. Um, Tyler, our vocalist, was like, "Hey man, you should make your drums into Pokeballs." And I was <laughs> like, "Yeah, that's stupid." And like the more we thought about, it, I was like, "Yeah, that's kind of cool." And then they literally did it, and it sounds really good and looks good. Nice. Yeah, they're on. I, I've been with them for seven years, so. Wow. Yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah. And then them. we are Zildjian and Vic Firth brothers. Exactly. So yeah. Yeah. He's got. You've got your own sticks with your your logo and everything on there, right? Yeah, yeah, the little customized sticks. But yeah, I mean, they're just five B. So. Yeah, that's that's what mine are. I have five B cool. with with my logo on there too. Awesome. So I yeah, yeah. On that. yeah. What's you? You said earlier you're really excited about the Crash of Doom from Zildjian. That's what Dude, you've been like. Dude, yes, I. I actually, Connor Dennis was the one who was like, yo, you should get this. Um, and it's it's like really dry and huge and washy. And mm -hmm. like, you know, playing worship, you need that like symbol you can just like swell up really okay. huge yeah. without hearing like every little stick, you know, hit. Uh, and that has been awesome. And I was like kind of, I actually started using like a couple weeks ago at church because mm -hmm. I was like, oh, it kind of looks like a China symbol. Or are they going to be like cool with it? But uh, honestly, it's just, it's really versatile. Mm -hmm. It works for heavy stuff. It works for country. It okay. works. Yeah, it works for R and B. It works. It's just very like. There's a lot of room to mess with it, so it's cool. They're probably cool with it until you tell them that it's called the Crash of Doom. Yeah, exactly. And they're I like, just, I don't know I if you it. should really bring. Up. <laughs> no, but yeah, and then uh, Veradum. Oh yeah, both, yeah. Uh, both places. Is that how you say it? I think so. Veradum. I've been saying it wrong for a long time. Sorry. Well, I. They're I'm, awesome though. Yeah. So Bradham. I've been saying Veradum. Bradham? Brad, I've said that too. So I've said it both ways. I don't know if I, I know what I'm talking about or not, but I, I, I like the I'm shoes. I'm going to go with so. Bradham. That sounds Bradham. better. Yeah. But yeah. anyway. Honestly, they're sick. Yeah, they are They are super sick. But thank you so much for being here today. Of course, dude. Josh has some awesome uh, drum samples that are available. Um, yeah. It's from that kit right there, right? Yeah, we have that kit and we have the Pokemon kit too. Okay. Um, and they're, you know, full, they have all the symbols, they have all the drums and Lane Johnson here at Hewlett did them and he's mm -hmm. been, he's worked on like records forever, uh, like Under Earth Records. He's, he like interned under Matt Goldman for a long time. So okay. it was like, he's a dude, he was in Atlanta too, but he's like the god of drum sounds for a long time. So nice. Lane inherited a lot of that. So. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty stoked. Heck yeah. We have some new ones coming out too in the future, but. All right, well, yeah, thank you dude. so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. Is there anything else you want to tell people before we go? Are you good? Uh, I think we're good. All right. I had fun. Sick. Josh Manuel, Issues, just killing it. Make sure you check out the videos of us playing the songs together. We'll have that out, and yeah. uh, it's going to be a good time. Awesome. See ya.